I always knew I'd be thrown on these old threads for some reason. I didn't think it would be for this though. This is the old getup. No more late fees. Got my badge right here. The shirt's pretty simple though. It just says Blockbuster on the arm. That's pretty much it. Before I dive into this show, if you enjoy the cut of my jib, please do like and subscribe. I love to see it. Now on with the critique. Blockbuster. So when the news broke and I seen that they were making a blockbuster show, I of course had to check it out. However, I was very conscious that it looked like it was just going to be another cookie cutter sitcom. That's exactly what we got here. In this video, I aim to do a few things here. One is talk about the show itself, the sitcom, if it's funny, if it's not. Two is blockbusters. What did they get right and what did they fuck up on as well? Because that was catching my eye throughout the entire show. And also, what they could have done here to make it a lot better. There was a lot of potential in here if they had a competent writing staff who kind of understood why people loved blockbusters, and I feel like a lot of that was lost here. So in this sitcom, and the setup is, it is the last remaining blockbusters. It was at that point when they were all shutting down. Yeah, don't love the pattern that's starting to emerge. I'm sure you guys are gonna be just fine. Yeah, yeah, uh, maybe you're right. <laughs> you know, change can be scary, but oftentimes- Nice knowing you, Timmy. What? But you just said you're sure we'll be fine. And you probably will be. I, on the other hand, am screwed. They're finally liquidating corporate. This place is gonna be a wee work by tomorrow. And now we're left with just one. And now we're following the last ever staff of Blockbusters in the final store. And quite a selection we have. So first we've got Timmy. He is the manager of the store. He's like your lovable goofball. He plays it well. It leans a little bit too far into just stupid for the sake of stupid, but we'll come on to that. Next up, we've got Eliza. Now she is like the second in command. She has clearly got a lot of potential and feels like she's in a bit of a rut here at Blockbuster and wants to do more. Connie is your older character to the cast. As you can probably expect with it being a sitcom, she is going to be your spiritual character and the one that talks about God and all of these odd things. You've got Carlos. He is your massive movie buff character. You know, his passion is above anyone else's. He wants to be a director himself as well so in a few of the episodes it comes down to him producing a kind of short video. Hannah she is your standard naive character where she's in this world on her own and doesn't quite understand the street smarts of it or how to get by and it leaves all the other characters to kind of educate her on life whereas they clearly don't have the knowledge to be passing on. And lastly you've got Kayla she's the youngest in the staff she's just a smart ass she's always on her phone with a comment to make that's her in a nutshell really. And very lastly as a recurring character you've got Percy. Now now, he is a businessman as well. It's all about local businesses, this show. He actually owns the Blockbuster property and a few other of the local shops as well. So he's kind of like their landlord. He's also Kayla's dad. So that's how he gets embroiled in all the mixes as well. So as a sitcom goes, I typically stay away from ones like this because I personally just don't find them funny. You know, a lot of the humour in this show boils down to people just saying ridiculous things. Timmy is the main culprit for this, but he kind of over explains himself and just keeps talking in a run on when he really should stop. And that just leads to the joke and the punchline. You know, Eliza's like the straight man of the show, whereas Timmy just keeps on going and riffing. So they bounce off each other quite well. Dinosaur with glasses. Clever girl. Jurassic Park, you got it. <laughs> yeah, I completely wonder how you got that costume. Jurassic Park, you got it. <laughs> it's not to say it's good, it's just that they bounce off each other quite well. But the humour really is boiled down to just three main groups. You've got a character who just says something completely ridiculous and completely from left field. And so the other characters in the show just look at them a little bit stunned. I haven't seen you in forever. What have you been working on? It's Connie. Oh. I might have known that if it weren't so dark in here. I thought you were on candle duty. The second of the three is just topical humour. It can be a double-edged sword topical humour because when you watch the show in the time it came out, a lot of it could be very funny if it's well written, but then it just leaves it a bad taste in your mouth when you watch it, you know, a year or two down the line. It doesn't allow for much rewatchability. Ultimately, I decided even if it is a microchip, get the government spy. I promised my friend Helen we'd see Jeff Dunham live. Totally, but I asked why you took the job, not why you took the jab. That's what I'm talking about when I mean topical. They just shoehorn in references to things happening in modern day a lot. And the very third one, and this was to be expected to be fair, is movie references. However, they're not done in any kind of subtle way. They just hit you over the head with a movie reference. It's like the writers wanted to prove how many movies they knew and just made sure that they were all in here when they could. <laughs> Do you know that Aaron doesn't even like powdered donuts. What? 
Is this like a Men in Black situation where he's an alien pretending to be human? Like that subtlety to the movie being brought up, that's how it usually goes in this show. They don't do a good job of just kind of slipping it past you. It's a reference and not a joke. And because it takes up such a huge portion of the writing, a lot of it just falls flat. You know, within the 10 episodes, I'm not going to go through all of the plot points, but a lot of it can be summed up to Timmy not having the money to just keep the business going. And so there's situations where he needs to find money, he needs to fire somebody. Just your sitcom tropes get put in here. You know, not many of them are blockbuster specific. It's more that blockbuster has been used as just a backdrop to just whatever slapdash comedy they want to throw onto it. But in regards to this shot, like, I totally get this is a sitcom and I am way overthinking things. However, see unless it's mentioned for a joke or it's specific to the narrative, and I swear that only happens like four times out of the ten episodes. All of the staff are on shift all of the fucking time. Like, no wonder Timmy struggles. He is paying his own wage, five others, around the clock in this store. Why is no one working? There's not a rota. We don't see the different staff mingling with each other throughout the episodes. What would have been really interesting here is if you got to see maybe the rota changes where sitcoms are great at coupling up different pairings because they all have their own different dynamics that they're going to bring to the table. It's not the case here. It's always just all six of them. Well, normally Timmy and Eliza and then the other four because they have like a love thing that, I'll be honest, goes fucking nowhere. It sets up a cliffhanger for season two, which I'm not gonna lie, I hope there isn't, but there doesn't seem to be many pairings in this show. Because all the characters are so stereotyped, it could have made for some interesting pairings in amongst them. Sadly, that's not the case. Because they're all on screen together and they're all taking part in the same kind of schemes at the same time, we don't see that. We just kind of get a little bit of them all. Now, I get why you don't want nuanced characters as much as just stereotypes. As any sitcom, you should just be able to kind of jump in and out the episode without a backstory. So I know I'm overthinking it there. But in a show like this, use the work rota to your advantage and change it up. Mix it up so we're not watching the same shit every episode. Now I just want to make this very clear front and center. I do not mind a progressive show. That being said, this brings me on to one very annoying nitpick I had with Carlos as a character. Now Carlos is bisexual, not the nitpick. Just wait. The only kind of love story in the show is between Timmy and Eliza. However, in episode two, and two only, they shoehorned in Carlos getting with this guy. You know, him and this guy butt heads throughout the episode, and then at the very end it reveals that he's flirting with them, but he doesn't know how to flirt, so that's the whole thing. Fantastic. No issue with that whatsoever. But that character is then just dropped and not mentioned again for the entirety of the show. It hits you over the head and comes massively out of left field just to never be talked about again. What the hell's your problem? Oh, well, I'm allergic to tree nuts. Gluten wrecks me. The son and I were not friends, and I have no. a back. You keep stealing my customers, you drag my whole Halloween costume, and you keep trying to out movie knowledge me every chance you get. Why are you doing this? Well, because I like you. Wait, so that was you flirting? That was in episode two. I was waiting throughout the entirety of the show for him to be re-referenced or come back in in an episode. They don't do it. You know, with the four kind of secondary staff members, there could have been stories there where they meet people and they get involved and they have relationships. It's 10 episodes in a sitcom, so it doesn't need to be heavy handed, but make it happen. But the only time is with Carlos and it's just massively shoehorned in. It almost feels like it's doing a disservice more than being progressive because of how they handled it. My issue with it is that it feels more checkboxy than it does for representation, which should not be the case, certainly by fucking Netflix. Look, if you've seen kind of any sitcom just getting thrown out there recently in the last few years, you've probably seen this and all the jokes it entails. This one probably has more movie references, but that's probably about it. Now where I'd like to go next is who was this for? Because it feels like on the surface it's a love letter to Blockbuster, which I would have fully loved. Out of the staff, a lot of them don't want to be there. Plus, this place sucks. So it leaves you to wonder what the kind of idea is behind the show. And that's what I mean by it just feels more like a backdrop than any actual premise or setup. Because Timmy loves the place and he's keeping it going. Even Eliza wants to jump ship and absolutely shat on the place in one episode. Not even to Timmy. She applied for a new job and just shat on Blockbuster to get this job. Carlos, he's directing but wants to move on with his life and that's fair enough. But the other characters either don't care about movies 
or just want a job at the end of the day. There's not that passion behind them. This place sucks. So if you're going to market it as Blockbuster, you know it's going to grab the attention of people like me who loved Blockbuster back in the day because you would just go in on a Friday night with your family or friends, pick out a couple of movies, searching for them was half the fun, and then go and having a good night watching them. That seems completely lost on this show. It's a lot of smart ass characters that don't deserve to be. What I would have loved to have seen here is having more focus on the customers. It is a great opportunity for reoccurring characters, especially in a sitcom, but have them come in and be likeable. We only get one customer that's reoccurring. She does no harm, but her only joke is that she comes in and asks for a movie at the wrong time and then just kind of slinks away again. This seems like a bad time, I know, but I'm looking for a Robert De Niro movie where he doesn't play a naughty grandpa. Any ideas? Now look, she's fine, that's all well and good. It's a sitcom and I get it. But why not have more customers come in? Have customers that have specific needs. Why not have customers that request the same things or maybe put the staff through their paces? And my problem with the customer focus is there aren't any good ones and also the staff just treat them like shit. The staff don't want them around. They talk to them behind their back or openly on the floor. We need space to build. <laughs> Don't worry, I got this. And the sooner we finish, the sooner that sicko will leave. I heard that. As characters, they're somewhat likable. As staff, they're really not. I get it's a sitcom. They just don't fucking work ever. There are countless examples of this, but this happens all throughout the show, where the staff are just standing around because they're preoccupied by their own issues going on or whatever the scheme of the episode is. But like, this is a shop. You need to be working. Kayla, I'm sure, mentioned that she's 16 in the show. Now, I don't know what it was like over in the States, but here, I couldn't work at Blockbuster until I turned 18 because you're selling people games and movies that are 18. So you need to be old enough to buy the games to obviously work there and then sell the games. Like, legally speaking. So I don't know how she's got the job. And also, they just take calls on shift as well. Hey, babe, hey. I'm still at work. What's up? Oh, I just wanted to see your face. I miss you, Goose. Oh, yeah? Thanks. Anything else? I was thinking, what if I came home from poker night early? So In Spanish. Corazón, go get ready for work. Come, come, You're gonna come, be come, 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 look, look, look. Oh, me. <laughs> Why is no one working? Like, there's no redeeming qualities about these characters as staff members. So when he was trying to work out who to fire. If I don't fire somebody by 5 p.m. today, I'm going to lose the store. My God, he had an issue going through it. I would have sacked them all. See, when I was behind the counter, the customers are just what made it so good. You know, you'd see familiar faces come in. It's how I personally kind of made connections with a lot of people. I wouldn't know them personally or go hang out with them outside of work. But see, when they came into the store, you knew them. You knew their preferences and what they were wanting in a movie and you would recommend to that. And that's what was fantastic about working there. I absolutely loved it. It was easily the best job I had. And this show just shat all over it. I can only wonder why they've decided to make this show. Make it rain. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't feel like a lot of love or care has gone into the show. Another thing that kept pulling me out was the sound kind of fucked a lot of the time in this show. Like, I've got a couple of examples I saved out. There are more, but here were the few that really just stood out to me. Why didn't you tell us? Because it's embarrassing. I didn't think I'd actually get picked. I didn't think I'd actually get picked. I mean, look at me. Arrest me, officers. We're the fire department. We're the fire department. Uh, it was a, a, a family emergency diarrhea thing? Weird, it happened to you too. Uh, okay, well, I am on my way now with all of the money, <laughs> or um, uh, most of it. Hypothetically, if I didn't- uh, It was a, a, a family emergency diarrhea thing? Weird, it happened to you too. Uh, okay, well. Like, you can have another take and get that right. It just felt like very slapdash, like they didn't care enough to make it right. And also, for continuity, this really stood out to me. Those are the cleanest looking fucking paints you've ever seen. And then it turns around and they're the used glasses. But then it goes back and they're the perfectly clean glasses. So they were conscious enough to place them back down, but not conscious enough to make them dirty. And one other thing that kept taking me out of this show was the DVDs themselves. Now, of course, they're going to be in the background of a lot of shots. And I get that movie cases and posters will change based on region. So I might be wrong on this. But what it looks like is they've got a lot of names of well-known movies, but not the box arts for them. And that was very distracting. So you'd see the names of the movie, but it doesn't match the box it was on. And that just took you out a little bit. Like, see if I'm wrong and these are, like, your region's cases, let me know. But for me in the UK, none of these were correct. And it just kept throwing me off. And here's just for a couple of things that the show either got right or wrong based on my experience with Blockbuster itself. Number one, the computer system. 
spot on. It was looked a little bit different. See that old school interface? That is exactly how it looked. It was really easy to navigate, however, they just never updated the fucking systems. But in episode one, they throw in a street party to get people to sign up to Blockbusters again, and they do it out in the street. You know, it's a paper card that gets laminated. They definitely used to be the case. But for the longest time, it was just a plastic card that you would get, and you even got like one for your keys. This laminating side of things, that's well outdated. And also when they're doing stock take, they're stock taking the cases on the shelves. There's fucking nothing in the cases. You put the discs in the back shop so that nobody can steal it. And the final episode, shit goes down and people start stealing and just steal loads of cases. Who are all these people? Uh, I'm Tad from Ohio. I'm a Scorpio. There shouldn't be anything in the cases to fucking steal. That's not part of this. So one of the through lines to this entire series, it just comes up on the news every now and again, is that there's a solar storm coming and this is going to fuck with everybody's internet, electricity, you know, just technology as a whole. In episode 10, this is when it finally comes down. It kind of gets rid of the internet and streaming services and so everyone flocks to Blockbuster and this is done in this big epic finale. It feels very forced to get people back to Blockbusters. You know, they didn't have a way to get people back to Blockbusters in modern times, so they just had to get rid of the the internet. That doesn't sound promising for Blockbusters. I remember it fondly. I personally would still go to Blockbusters if one was open. And this one, they don't do games. That really annoyed me. I don't know about you, it was mainly known for movies, it's called Blockbuster after all. However, I went for games there, both renting and buying. A lot of my friends did. That was a huge part of the job. You know, one thing they could have done here and made an episode around, which would have been fantastic, would be a midnight launch. You know, I personally worked the midnight launch in Blockbusters for Grand Theft Auto V. I'm from a small town, and even still, that shit was crazy, working behind the till that night. Put games in here, because all they do is reference movies, but throw in games as well, it makes it more real, and that allows you to open up to a midnight launch episode. Sure, make it crazy, shit goes down, whatever you want to do with it. But how many of you remember going to a midnight launch for any game out there? But I'm sure if you've went to one, you can tell me immediately what game it was you went to a midnight launch for. That sticks with you. They are some great memories. I will give props for this though, because I did find it funny, but the employee of the month while they changed all the photos to Steve Buscemi, just because it was great. And they kept it throughout the 10 episodes, so you'd see it popping up now and again, and it just made me laugh every time. It's just multiple Steve Buscemi's on the wall. So like, this was definitely a little bit different to anything I usually do on this channel, but given the context, I had to put it out there. That was just some of my thoughts on Blockbuster, bit of my experience there as well, and also what I think they could have done better. Now like, have you watched Blockbuster? What did you think of it? Let me know if we agree or disagree. And even going one step further, do you remember your Blockbuster? Tell me about it. I'm sure there's some amazing stories out there from your time at Blockbusters, so let me know. And if you haven't yet, please do consider hitting subscribe and typically review those movies that get a little bit less covered and less talked about, ironically not the blockbuster movies, and just try and find some hidden gems for myself and recommend to my audience. So if you haven't yet, hit subscribe to see more. Thank you so much for watching.